When you're at a steady cadence and you're feeling good, double inhale, exhale, double inhale, exhale is a terrific way to breathe while you're in ongoing effort. There is one thing I want to mention. There's some very good physiology that can perhaps support the actual running effort part. And we have a study going on uh, with David Spiegel at Stanford looking at how different patterns of breathing can affect heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is good. There's this interesting mechanism I, that I think most people might not realize, but that medical students learn that your breathing and your heart rate and your brain are in this really remarkable interplay. It goes like this. When you inhale, the diaphragm moves down. Yeah. The heart gets a little bigger because there's a little more space in the thoracic cavity. And as a consequence, blood flows a little bit more slowly through that larger volume. Mm -hmm. And there's a category of neurons, the sinoatrial node, that sees that, that recognizes that, that slower rate through that larger volume, it sends a signal to the brainstem, and the brainstem sends a signal back to the heart to speed the heart up. Mm -hmm. So every time you inhale, you're speeding the heart up. When you exhale, the diaphragm moves up, the heart gets a little smaller, the volume is smaller, blood flows more quickly through the heart, signal sent up to the brain, and the brain sends a signal back to s slow the heart down. This is the basis of heart rate variability. So at any point, if you feel like your heart is racing and you feel like you're working too hard per unit of effort, mm -hmm. focus on making your exhales longer or more intense than your inhales. If ever you feel like you're truly flagging, you do not have the energy to get up, it's like, okay, it's time to go and you're exhausted, you want to draw more oxygen into the system, get your heart rate going faster. Now, some people, when they hear this, probably think, well, this is really obvious, but there's so much out there about breath work and how to breathe and all this stuff, but no one talks about how to do it in real time mm -hmm. while you're exerting effort. So this is something like almost like second by second, you can adjust things to just in real time based on how you're feeling, but based on the heart rate. That's right. The experience of the heart rate. That's right. So one thing that w could could be very efficient, but if you, while you're running, if you want to get into a nice cadence of heart rate variability, do double inhales while you're running. What this will do is that when you do the double inhale, it has the effect of, of reopening the avioli of the lungs. You, your lungs are filled with tons of little sacs. When you, they tend to collapse as you fatigue when you, and carbon dioxide builds up in the bloodstream. And that's when we start getting stressed. If you've ever been sprinting, you start getting beat and you're mm -hmm. going as hard as you can. What, what you really need to do is double inhale and reinflate these sacs in the lungs and then offload a lot of carbon dioxide. So when you're at a steady cadence and you're feeling good, double inhale, exhale, double inhale, exhale is a terrific way to breathe while you're in ongoing effort. When we exercise, you can you can do pure nasal breathing, but the problem is once you get up to kind of third and fourth and fifth gear effort, you can't nasal breathe and be at maximum capacity unless you've been training it for a very long time. So I would say double inhale through the nose, offload through the mouth. So double inhale, exhale while you're in steady effort. And then if you really feel like you need to gas it and you're pushing, the data show that then just use whatever's there, right? Just go into kind of default mode because bringing too much concentration to something is also going to spend epinephrine. The goal is to get into that, I don't like the word, but the flow state where you're not thinking too much, you're just in exertion. So these are so these are things that can help in the transitions, um, but I don't think there's any secret breathing technique. You know, anyone who's been in the SEAL teams will kind of, you know, they'll tell you like, there's no breathing technique, right? There's, a, there's tools that you can look to from time to time and these double inhale exhales can be great for setting heart rate variability in very quickly and getting into a steady cadence while you're exercising. But if there's a sprint, like if suddenly you guys are sprinting, ditch the, ditch the double inhale exhale yeah. and just sprint. A few years ago, when my laboratory got interested in studying stress in humans, we asked ourselves, what are the patterns of breathing that allow for the most rapid reduction in stress levels? And more importantly, what are the patterns of breathing that can be done in real time so that people can adjust their stress while they're still engaging in life, right? Breathwork classes, running off to Esalen for a weekend is a magical experience, but life demands pressing on you. That's typically when you feel stress. So it is still true that vacation, long meditation retreats and massages or a nice drink, if you're of drinking age, still work, but they're slow and they take you offline. The physiological sigh is a pattern of breathing that we all engage in in deep sleep when levels of carbon dioxide in our bloodstream get too high, 
we or our dogs, you can see your dog do this, will do a double inhale followed by an extended exhale. Children or, or adults for that matter that are sobbing and lose their breath, so to speak, will also do a double inhale exhale. That's the spontaneous execution of what we call the physiological sigh. The reason it works so well to relax us is because it offloads a lot of carbon dioxide all at once. And the way it works is the following. Our lungs are not just two big bags of air. We have all these little millions of sacks of air that if we were to lay them out flat, they would be as, as big as about a tennis court or so. The volume of air, therefore, and the volume of carbon dioxide that we can offload is tremendously high, except that we get stressed as carbon dioxide builds up on our bloodstream and it's kind of a double whammy. These little sacks deflate. Now, when we do a double inhale, when you do that, you reinflate those little sacks. And when you exhale, then you discard all the carbon dioxide at once. So the simple way to describe this protocol is that unless you are underwater, you do a double inhale followed by an extended exhale and you offload the maximum amount of carbon dioxide. And we found in our laboratory and other laboratories have found that just one two or three of those physiological size brings your level of stress down very, very fast. And it's a tool that, you know, you can use any time. I do hope that people will kind of watch other people or dogs as they start to relax or go down to sleep. You'll see this pattern of breathing, but again, it can be consciously driven. The other thing about breathing and the reason why exhales are so vital is the following. I know there's a lot of interest nowadays in heart rate variability. Most people don't realize this, but your breathing is actually driving heart rate variability. So when you inhale this dome-shaped muscle beneath your lungs, your diaphragm actually moves down because the lungs expand, it moves down. When you do that, you create more space in the thoracic cavity and you actually, the heart gets a little bigger, it actually expands. As a consequence, blood flows more slowly through that larger volume and the brain quickly sends a signal down to the heart to speed the heart up. The short, simple version of this is inhales speed the heart up. When you exhale, the opposite is true. That dome-shaped muscle, the diaphragm moves up. The space in your thoracic cavity gets a little bit smaller. The heart gets a little bit smaller. Blood moves more quickly through that small volume and the brain sends a signal to the heart to slow the heart down. Physicians know this as respiratory sinus arrhythmia, but this is the basis of what we call HRV, heart rate variability. And the simple way to remember this is anytime you emphasize exhales, in other words, making them longer than your inhales, you are slowing the heart rate down, you're calming your system. Anytime you emphasize inhales, you make them more vigorous or longer than your exhales, you're speeding up your heart. Mm -hmm. 